Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You got a horror Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the Time to sit back, relax, and enjoy because, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps. The green flag is waving. Hello again. It is MRN Wing Nation here on the Motor Racing Network. We're presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. So glad you joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post after, I guess, Ashley and I were on the road trip to Volusia. Yeah. Uh, we're back in studio now. Back it's to nice continue. Yeah. Yes, it is. Still, still out of the loop. I didn't make it to the track. I haven't been in the studio. You have yeah, to like what you're doing? Slacking it, slacking off, huh? I know. I know. Yeah, I being know. a mom, being a, I mean, you know, everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy busy. times. Busy, that's for sure. <laughs> busy, that's for sure. It was a great speed week. Great racing down in Volusia as well, and uh, even great racing this past weekend at East Bay. Yeah, Sounded like yeah. a big one as well. Absolutely. I follow along on, on you know Twitter, Facebook, oh, yeah. everywhere. So I, I'm still somewhat in the loop. Somewhat in the yeah. loop. There we go. Not quite well, the same, so. exactly. So hey, let's get right to our classic ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. And uh, the hot topics was rain, hail, thunderstorm, cold, <laughs> lightning, tornado warnings. And Danny Dietrich at Lincoln Speedway just a Saturday afternoon in Pennsylvania. Wild weather. Wild, wild weather up there. And, um, you know, Lincoln has always been real adamant about we're racing, we're racing, we're yeah. racing. Uh, they put their actions behind their words this past uh, Saturday afternoon with the running of that one because it was a three or four hour delay in the middle of it all. Well, I saw like on Twitter these warnings for tornadoes and yeah. whatever. And then all of a sudden I see on Twitter feed, it's clear here at Lincoln, we're ready to go. I'm like, wait a second. What in the world, yeah. <laughs> yeah How'd exactly. that happen? You know, Fred Putney is the uh, track prep guy there and he's a guru at preparing a track. So he had a handful, but he got it together and uh, some good racing. And and ultimately, who better to win than on, than on a night where there's hail, thunderstorms, <laughs> pestilence, tornadoes, than Danny Dietrich. I mean, our very own hail, thunderstorm, yep, yep. you know, I mean, likes so. Likes to cause a storm. Yeah. Likes to cause a storm, no <laughs> doubt about it. And he put it in victory lane. He parked it, if you will. So congratulations to that. And really, uh, the other hot topic is uh, ASCS up and running. And they sent out a release, Aaron, more than 150 races this year with their national tour in their seven regions, 23 states, 70 tracks, Aye, aye, aye. That, it, that's awesome. Like, I, you know, every time I start to get concerned that sprint car racing, you know, might be on the decline, the fans, the sponsors, you know, it seems to be building. So I'm like, I guess I'm just crazy by getting nervous about it. But in every sense, in the 410s, 360s, ASCS is like, that, that's awesome. Yep, indeed. And and really, the ASCS says the big, uh, the, the Jim Raper Memorial uh, yep. Dirt Cup up at Skagit, that's a $15,000 to win race. The 360 Nationals in Knoxville, of course, that speaks yep. for itself. Short Track Nationals are back under the ASCS umbrella mm -hmm. this year so really really cool actually did a little bit of a poll as we got into the um, king of the 360s you know we kind of know the pecking order in the 410 word the, the knoxville nationals you know yeah. then the national open the uh, king's royal uh, i know jackson nationals are hoping to climb into that tier yeah. and everything and i kind of did a poll of the 360 races just to see what sprint car fans thought And when you look at it ascs has some pretty good ones you probably throw in trophy cup yeah. And Canadian, uh, the yeah. Canadian national or the Canadian Open. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm in the Canadian Spring Car Championship. But really, you take that, and then ASCS has the the bulk of the big yeah. ones here stateside. So uh, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So really, really cool. And they kicked off with 63 cars That's at East Bay. That's awesome. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That really is. Mark Smith was the winner, and Mark will join us a little bit later on on the program. There you have it. Those are our Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery hot topics. Classic Ink, great for all of your needs, whether they be racing needs or school or business or fundraising campaigns, whether you need hats, t-shirts, hoodies, whatever you may need. Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery, they can take care of you. You can find out more information at www.classicinkusa.com. Mark Smith did win that opener for the ASCS Southern Tour down at East Bay. We'll talk to him next. Watch MRN's Wing Nation with Steve Post and Ashley Stremme on MAV-TV, Saturdays at 9.30 and 12.30 Eastern. 
The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum's newest feature exhibit is our salute to champion Sammy Swindell, June 9th through October 15th, at the only museum in the world solely dedicated to sprint car racing, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Stop in and check out eight of Sammy's original race cars and see his trophies, uniforms, and more as you learn about his outstanding career. The salute to champion Sammy Swindell is only this season at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville. Restore your vehicle's lost power by cleaning your entire fuel system with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner. Right now, buy one bottle and get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts, plus get double O rewards points on your purchase. Keep your engine clean with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. I'm Danny Holcraver, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Welcome back. It is MRN Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. And let's go right to the hotline. Joining us now, fresh off that win at East Bay in the king of the 360s race, Mark Smith joins us. Hello, Mark. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Doing really, really good, Mark. Uh, it seems like we talked to you often after this one, a second-time winner of the race down there. Um, how did it go on Saturday night? Just tell us about your tell us about your night. Tell us about your weekend at East Bay. Oh, it was uh, actually a really good weekend. Uh, we won two out of the three nights, and uh, that's a pretty big accomplishment with the uh, the caliper cars that were there. And uh, Saturday night was uh, was kind of pretty easy going because we were locked in in the top six and didn't really have to stress ourselves out with getting qualified and like some of the a lot of the other guys had to but uh, because that's a pretty tough night to try and get qualified because they only take one out of each heat and then two uh two or three out of each b so it's it's a it's a pretty tough night mark i always thought that east bay was like a great way to assess the coming year you know you see everyone's new equipment uh what's going on was there anything anything new or anything exciting or anything different that you felt at East Bay? I, I always thought that that was like, a, like I said, like a preview of the year to come. Well, not really. Um, that was a, it actually was a brand new car, but I, I'm running the same exact setup I have been there in the last four years. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> changed a thing. So uh, maybe, maybe that's what makes us so consistent there. Cause we don't, we go back with the same package every time, uh, maybe, you know, just a different race car, but, uh, it it does get your your season jump started. I mean, heck, we we already got two wins this year and out of six races, so it does does get your get your season going pretty good. Mark, you're always one of these fascinating people to me because you're based in central Pennsylvania and conventional wisdom, common wisdom would be, all right, go run your 70, 80, 90, 410 races and move on. Like everyone else seems to do in central Pennsylvania, not so easy with you. You run a lot of 360s, you run some traditional sprint cars, and you run some 410 races. Uh, my first question is, how do you determine where and where, where you go? What what determines what you race? Well, uh, I mean, our our customer base is a lot of 360 racers and uh so i try and concentrate more on doing a lot of the 360 stuff just so i can spend more time at the racetrack that that my customers are at and i can race on the tracks that they're at and uh so i can give them better better information on getting their cars right and, uh, uh you know so on and so forth but uh, as far as 410 stuff uh it's just getting so expensive in our area to, to run a 410 anymore it's um it's just it's just tough for me to do that and there's a lot of family-owned race cars now there's not a whole lot of uh, rides to be had so it just makes it that much more tougher and and it's a little easier for me to get a 360 ride with some fellas uh like uh patrick Vigneault from quebec canada he he gives me the uh car to race in in new york and canada and and, uh, and then brian scandal my partner in business he supplies us with the 360 stuff and uh, unfortunately i have the 410 stuff so <laughs> <laughs> 
Mark, speaking of the, the chassis business, how is it going? You know, I was scanning through your, your Facebook page yesterday, and there was a lot of cars in Victory Lane. How, how's the business going for you? Uh, it's going really well. Um, actually, uh, East Bay is always a real good jump start for our business in the, in the wintertime here, uh, especially after this Saturday. We had I had a total of five cars down there, and uh, we usually had three to four cars every night in the show. And the final night, we had four cars in the show, and we had three in the top five. So that was, uh, I think that's pretty good odds as comparing to how many other chassis companies are down there. And we're, we're very small. In that, in that the case, yeah. that's for sure. Mark, when we when we talk about the chassis, and and I'll qualify this by saying I'm not Aaron. Okay, I'm a knucklehead radio guy that a race car looks like a race car. I barely tell the difference between, well, no, I know the difference between cup cars, NASCAR uh, monster cup cars, and sprint cars. But but sprint cars to sprint cars. When it comes time to the chassis business, and 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 I know, and I'm not asking you your secrets, but how how much just is there a percentage difference, or how much difference are there in 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 in, in the chassis as you go, and the rules that allow you? Does does it give you a lot of wiggle room or a little wiggle room? Uh, there's a little wiggle room there. They're they're all very similar. If you look at them, it's pretty hard to tell the differences between all the different types of chassis companies. But uh, you know, it's all in how they're assembled and and what types of tubing and you know thicknesses and stuff and what places you put them in, and uh, that just keeps the consistency of the race cars. And uh, uh, you know, I, I and it's you know it's just a preference thing. And I think uh, as far as like. Uh, customer service i think we have a lot of that compared to most mark going back to your your schedule what are some of the races that are kind of highlighted on the ske- on the calendar for this coming season uh well i'm gonna do about 19 to 20 races in uh, in new york and possibly canada uh with 360 and then uh, obviously we run saturday locally at sealands grove which uh I'd say half of those are special shows, and then uh, you know we'll do some some 410 stuff, uh, like some All Star races here and there, and uh, then we're going to do. Uh, I got a, a Silver Crown ride for this year. I'm going to do six of the dirt races, so uh, with Malcolm Lane, and uh, it's a whole new team, and they're based out of New York, so uh, we're going to do that, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. Well, that's very cool. Malcolm Lane, that's a name from Empire Super Sprints way back yeah. when. That's 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 awesome. Yeah, you you, you should know him, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We sat at uh, BlackRock, Tyler Burnett, one of the producers, uh-huh. and I, and I hadn't seen, uh, I hadn't seen Mal in yeah, years and years and years. Past. And we're sitting up there eating hot dogs, as radio guys do, like <laughs> we do. And here comes Mal with a hot dog and fries, sits down in front of me, and I nudge Tyler, and I said, there's a Hall of Famer right there. Yeah. And yep. um, he actually shared, we actually talked to him, and because of his passion for, for Silver Crown cars, and Tyler yep. is, a, is a USAC guy, actually, he's done a lot. Uh, he was sharing with me that he was going USAC racing, and I'm glad you got a chance to go. Yeah. What those cars? I mean, is it night and day different from a wing sprint car? Is it? Is are there some similarities, or how do they? No, uh, it's it's completely different. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, those things are just they're they're so heavy, and they just roll around. They kind of just float around the track, and then when you put all that fuel in the back, it's uh, it's nothing like you've ever driven. It's it's a it's a little bit slower paced. Uh, you gotta you can't just go out there and. You know, just hammer down and go right to the front. I kind of learned that first couple of races I did because <laughs> I wore my stuff out and I had nothing left for the last fifty. Mm. The the weight in the rear that that yeah. to me is fascinating to me because because you're right that that we we've joked around over the course of time with Kendra about big tail tanks, but when you're talking silver crown cars, There's man, that's got to be a huge tank. change over the course of the race. Oh yeah, yeah, you're lugging seventy five gallons of fuel around behind you there for the first you know first half of that race. Uh, it doesn't. You know, you can you can burn it off pretty quick, but uh, just those that first half of the race, it's just uh, you really got to be patient with it because you could spin it out pretty quick. <laughs> I can yeah. only imagine. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the track's changing, but the car is going to drastically yeah. change over the course beyond what they normally <laughs> yeah. do. Uh, yeah. Mark, it's always fascinating to chat with you. I always enjoy the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, what's your next race? Uh, I'm not sure. We were talking about maybe doing Devil's Bowl down in Texas there for the, the ASCS opener. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that or not, yeah. um, but we'll see. If not, maybe the Grove opener I'll do with the 410. 
Um, but our season really doesn't get started until April as far as like the 360 stuff. Yeah, exactly. Great stuff. Mark, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on the win down at East Bay, or the wins, I guess I should say, at East Bay. Continued yeah. success with the Mach 1 chassis business. You guys built some great race cars, and uh, appreciate you joining us. Okay, and I appreciate you having me on. That is really, really cool. Mark Smith joining us here. And I just, like I said, like I said, I think when, when uh, you and I were talking off the air, um, it's like he, he finds, he has a niche up there yeah. that just works really well for him personally. He's a world-class race car driver. I mean, the guy, the guy, the guy shows up anywhere he could win the race. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and then, but, but it's the Mach 1 chassis business, the 360 Sealands Grove yeah. and up New York State, up the old Empire Super Sprint area. Yep. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's good stuff. And neat that he's running some silver crown and he runs 410 it's kind of neat that he's kind of the, the, the true outlaw he really is he really truly is that's for sure we need to step away when we come back we are going to have a great conversation patrick sullivan is a historian race announcer and all-around good guy knows a lot about sprint cars whether they be traditional sprint cars or winged machines he's with sprint car and midget magazine patrick joins us next hi i'm craig kinzer and you're listening to wing nation on motorracingnetwork.com Only the best go free abreast, and they're coming to a track near you in 2017. No matter where you're at, the American Sprint Car Series is near you. From the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, presented by the Mad TV Motorsports Network, to any of the seven ASCS regional tours, there's over 150 nights of racing to choose from in 2017. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates. Listen live on RacingBoys.com and get the full rundown at ASCSRacing.com. Today, to your featured NASCAR fan is Carrie, Queen of Cakes. So, Carrie, why do they call you Queen of Cakes? Well, whenever Toyota wins a NASCAR race, I make a life-size Camry cake. Really? Yeah. Delicious and made in America, just like the dang car. And with all Toyota's wins last year, it was life-size Camry cake city. Oh, even lost a kid at one point. Tried to drive one of the cakes. Had to eat his way out of the drivetrain. Bless his heart. Let's go NASCAR fans! Toyota. Let's go places. To learn more, visit toyotaracing.com. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. Toyota vehicles and components are built using U.S. and global resource parts. Oh, oh, oh. O'Reilly. When it comes to safety, nothing is more important than your vehicle's brakes. If it's hard to stop or you hear squealing or grinding noises during braking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts. You'll find the brake parts you need from trusted brands like BrakeBest and BrakeBest Select at everyday low prices. Play it safe with brakes from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm Casey Kane. Now back to Wing Nation. Thank you, Casey. Welcome back. It is MR on Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. We are having a blast. Appreciate Mark Smith joining us. Let's go back to the guest line. You can catch his work at racetracks around the country mm -hmm. as an announcer, but also in Sprint Car and Midget Magazine. Patrick Sullivan joins us. Hello, man. How are you? I'm doing well, well Steve. I'm, I'm curious. Did you get a day off on Monday? Uh, no, no, no. We had some stuff we had to do around here, but that's all right. There's uh, There'll be days off. It's called December. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to really thank you guys, by the way. I was traveling north from Ocala and with Levi Jones at USAC, and we listened to the entire broadcast of Daytona 500. You guys did a tremendous job, as always, painting that story, and uh, it certainly made the trip a lot easier. Thank you. We appreciate it very, very much. Great. We appreciate all of our listeners, and it's, it's great to hear things like that. Pat, there's so many areas we want to talk about, but I think mm -hmm. congratulations are in order. First off, uh, Sprint Car Hall of Fame, that's a, that's a pretty neat honor. It was unbelievable, really. <laughs> uh, you know, Bob Baker called me, and I was really speechless. And, you know, I also felt really happy for my wife because there's a lot of sacrifices to go when you, you know, you have a normal job, and then you spend a lot of weekends at racetracks and, uh, uh, she was as emotional as I, I was. Um, but I suspect uh, Levi Jones made a comment to me on the way, on the, on the uh, car ride home, and I think it really rings true. He, he asked me if during my career if, when I was working, was I working with the intentions of getting into the Hall of Fame? And I said, no, you, you do the best you can at the things that you're trying to do as a, as a matter of pride as, as anything else. And and then sometimes those things come, um, but you don't expect them. And secondly, I think the thing that most is most important to say is, I'm not Tony Elliott, I'm not Dave Darlin, um, I'm not Terry McCall, McCarl rather. 
I mean, those are the people who really put it on the line, the racers and the mechanics and worked hard. I'm just delighted to be a part of this sport. It's a great honor. Pat, congratulations from me as well. I feel like, uh, it, without a doubt, I'm on the board for the Hall of Fame and very right. deserving. And Thank I think you. that you should give yourself more credit. You, <laughs> you belong with those guys just because you weren't maybe behind the wheel. Uh, yeah. you know, I feel like I bumped into you at tracks all over the country in, in different events. During your career, how did you make your, your schedule and how many races uh, on average did you attend a year? Because I feel like I bumped into you in Indy, maybe California, maybe Florida. You know, how did the calendar always come about and you know, how, much, how many weekends did you spend at the track? Well, I think it, at the peak I was announcing 80 to 90 races a year. Um, and I started in Missouri uh, when I was teaching at uh, what is now Missouri State University. I, I worked for a couple of tracks there, and I was very interested in continuing. And Tony Stewart actually helped me. I had met him. I announced his first USAC sprint car win in, in Lebanon, Missouri. And then uh, I, I hooked up eventually with a guy named Brad Dickinson, who's been my announcing partner for uh, 24 years. And, and we really clicked. And so people really started liking what we were doing. And then a track would approach us, and then we worked the uh, old 16th Street Speedway in Indianapolis. Uh, Tony George asked us to do the IndyCar uh, stuff. We did that. Um, some of the tracks then asked if I could do NASCAR, and I said, of course, I could do that. I'd done Raceway Park, of course, for well over 20 years, and so um, it just sort of happened. It sort of evolved that way. I don't do quite as much as I used to, um, but I still do a lot, but it just sort of happened, and, and, and man, was it, it it was and it still is fun. It really is. We uh, Those of us who get to talk about this for a living, it is a dream dream job for me, and I know it is for you as well. So uh, with, with all of that, and as we look at 2017, and, and I know you just spent the weekend at Ocala announcing the action down at Bubba Raceway Park, uh, it, it, you know, traditional sprint cars, wing sprint cars, just what are some of the, the, the things you're going to be looking for as we as we get uh, get rolling into this season? Well, I think it's a wide open, uh, first of all, I think it's a wide open USAC championship. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, Chad Baseflug is with a new team, the most successful team in USAC history, the, the Hoffmans, although his infrastructure remained in place. I think he could score. Uh, Justin Grant, who had a tremendous weekend with a teenage uh, crew chief, if you will, and Sam McGee. Uh, he's, a, he's a dark horse candidate for that. Chase Stockton's been knocking on the door, Thomas Meserol. It's really wide open. I think that's incredibly interesting. Um, can anyone knock off Donnie Schatz? I mean, you know, Jason Johnson won Knoxville last year. Obviously, he's already won this year. I'm interested to see what Tony does with the All-Stars and as that continues to grow. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, it's really nice in Indiana also when um, – we have the, the, the trade-off with a lot more drivers are doing both now. We have a lot of our traditional guys putting the wing on. I think it really helps them a lot. Um, and there's just interest in both series. I mean, Johnny Gibson came up in the booth with me at, at the USAC races. We just like sprint car racing, Steve, and, and really like all kinds of racing. Pat, your latest column in Sprint Car Midget Magazine about having more signature events and, and higher dollar yeah. uh, paying events, was, I thought it was a really neat article. Um, maybe you could share a little bit with our listeners about it, but I love the idea when you wrote about how recently you wanted to go to a concert and you sat at your computer because you had to get, you know, the tickets were going to sell out and you're, you think that there should be that kind of demand possibly for a race. So maybe share a little bit of those thoughts. I thought it was a, a really well-written Well, column. it's really interesting. One of the problems that we have if it comes to USAC, and and, I, and they know this, is, is that a lot of their big stars race every weekend in Indiana. So I've announced at Bloomington Speedway for, for 24 years. Um, Bloomington, Lincoln Park, Gas City, Kokomo, Tri-State, and the southern part of the state, Lawrenceburg. The USAC stars race there. Um, and so it, there's always that business about, you know, if the circus comes into town one time, you want to see it. Um, and so there can be some situations there where the fans don't feel quite the urgency to see a USAC race because some of the drivers are very familiar uh, to them. The World of Outlaws come in one or two times a year. People really want to see that, and there's a lot of pent-up for demand for that. Now, the other side of that equation is is that, you know, there's 
less cost probably with USAC in terms of travel, et cetera, but there's fewer higher dollar paying events. You know, how do we create interest across sprint car racing across the board, pay these individuals money that is that is um, really worth going after mm -hmm. and traveling for, um, and keeping it affordable for the fans, I think is really one of the great uh, questions. Years ago, Ron Schumann attempted something called the Non-Wing World Championship, and it really included primarily the Midwest and California. But could we come up with some signature events? Could we come up with some signature high-dollar events across the nation that became must-see events for fans, destinations for fans? And I think that's the issue, Aaron. Indiana Sprint Week is a destination for fans. Mm -hmm. The Knoxville Nationals is a destination for fans. Can we have more of those? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like that. The, the, big, right. the big events, they're a lot of fun. Pat, I am telling you what, I'm looking at the clock, and we are way <laughs> over time and way past time. I can talk to you all day long, but unfortunately we've got we've to end it at this point. We appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. And thank you guys again for what you do for our sport. I really appreciate it. That is Pat Sullivan, and you can catch his fine work. His column is fantastic. Yeah, every, every month it's yeah. great, but it's in Sprint Car in Midget Magazine. Stay with us more in just a moment. I'm Danny Holcraver, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Classic Ink USA Screen Printing and Embroidery is constantly testing the limits of custom racewear and specialized embroidery. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Classic Ink holds the highest standard, maximizing your return as well as the ultimate customer satisfaction. From track swag fan wear to quick crew crew wear, Classic Ink has you covered. Their dedicated staff and designers will keep your race team and fans looking sharp. Contact Classic Ink today and get your team ahead of the competition. www. For over 50 years, drivers in sprint car, midget, micro, modified, and even dark Lay model have taken the checkered flag on weld racing wheels. Legendary drivers like Joe Saldana, Carl, Mark, and Steve Kinzer, Doug Wolfgang, and countless other racers have trusted weld racing wheels for their superior strength and lightweight construction to finish ahead of the competition. With 50 years of race winning engineering and technology, American made weld racing wheels are designed and built to withstand virtually any abuse you throw at them. Weld racing, proven speed. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Restore your vehicle's lost power by cleaning your entire fuel system with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner. Right now, buy one bottle and get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts, plus get double O rewards points on your purchase. Keep your engine clean with Chevron Techron Fuel System Cleaner at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm Kerry Madsen. And you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Thank you, Madman. This is MRN Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Time to look at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame calendar. Uh, birthdays, um, uh, Albert Babe Stapp. Birthday on Sunday, Monday, mm -hmm. Ted Horn, Steve Chassis. Today, Mario Andretti. And he was at Daytona I for know. the 500. Oh, it's, when Mario He's Andretti incredible. walks in, you know, there's the drivers meeting, but then Mario Andretti walks in, and the drivers are all little kids Ooh, wanting an on. autograph. <laughs> exactly. So, really cool there. Joe Gertie. Uh, tomorrow, Billy Pouch. Uh, Thursday, Dennis Duke Nailing. Friday, Fred Raymer, Rick Unger. Uh, so, big partying up in Pennsylvania for Raymer's birthday. That's a national <laughs> holiday course. up there. Um, I want to mention this. A lot of times we'll highlight a birthday, but uh, I got this note from Larry Janicek. Larry is one of the volunteers and just one of the one of the rocks out at the uh, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. And uh, and, and the, one of the big news in the sprint car world is the passing of uh, Cappy, Ralph Capitani. Mm -hmm. um, Larry says along six Hall of Fame inductees since June induction have passed away. Lanny Edwards, Wendy McDonald, Gordon Woolley, uh, Rusty Espinoza, Gil Sauner, and Cappy. Um, very, very sad, and it's a sad time out at the Hall of Fame, and Cappy was just uh, an, an iconic promoter in the sport. Iconic, did so much for Knoxville, the Knoxville Nationals, the, the sprint car world in general. I mean, it's a, it's a huge loss, but I think his, uh, his ways will go on forever. People learned a lot from him. Really did. I know in talking with Kendra, she's talked a lot about the, the effect of Cappy out there and, and the different lessons learned, yep. whether they were lessons learned as a little girl going there yep. or lessons learned as a uh, operator of the track, mm -hmm. or along with John McCoy doing it there. So, you know, the good news is, and we've, we mention this all the time, but we really think about it at moments like this, is the Sprint Car Hall of Fame is there with the stories 
yeah. of these people who are no longer with us. Yeah. So you can find out more information at SprintCarHOF.com. Hey, we're out of time. We appreciate Mark Smith, Pat Sullivan for joining us. More important, thank you for joining You've us You've listening today. to Winged Nation, presented by Hercules Tire, right on our strength. You can also find Winged Nation on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and in the MRN.com Media Center. Winged Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.